Hello OCF, very exciting day today. Today we're going to be headed to the Annunciation Greek Orthodox Cathedral here in Columbus, Ohio. We are going to get a church tour from Father Chris Seferis. He is one of my favorite people in the world and uh, very excited for today. So why don't we head out? Things are going pretty great. I'm, I'm excited to get this tour of the church today. Yeah, wonderful. Come on in. Of course, as you know, we're in the narthex right now. It's kind of our nice little warm-up area. But if I may say so myself, I think our church is probably one of the most beautiful ones you could find in North America. Uh, and primarily that's because of two reasons, the architecture and the mosaics. Every time I come to this church, I'm always just Although I probably should be paying a little bit more attention. I'm staring at all these mosaics because they're so unique. I would love to agree with you and mm -hmm. say you should pay more attention to the service. However, <laughs> the way our theology works, you're meant to be inspired by the beauty. And that's the reason why our churches are meant to be magnificent. There is one really cool thing that St. Paisius pointed out in one of his books about mosaics. He says, imagine just a broken tile, mm -hmm. you know, and how useless that is and then look at what God can do with just broken tiles. So oh. here we have two million pieces of little glass that have been shattered and they're put together in such a magnificent way as to give glory to God and to help us all, you know, focus on Christ. So. When was this church made? Yeah, so the community has been here for over a hundred years. Wow. I believe it was uh, 1913, but this cathedral um, they started working on it in the late 80s, and I think the, the majority of the actual structure was finished in 1990. This setup is so unique in that usually when I, I see churches, they have the more, the long up the middle. For sure. And then like the two little branches up the sides, yep. but it's definitely a more symmetrical cross, I guess. Right, yeah, saying. so traditionally in Orthodox Christian architecture when it comes to churches, there were two main forms. There was the basilica, which is the long rectangle, and then the cruciform, which is kind of the long rectangle with the two wings sticking yes, out. And yes. If you looked from above, it would look like a cross with a longer uh, bottom portion. Well, our church is kind of more of a box shape. You can still make out the, the, the basic cruciform structure in the sense that you have an axis running right down this way. Mm -hmm. And then one that's going, if you look at the dome, it's kind of the central point, and then one that's going this way. And so it still maintains some of those elements with just a little bit of transition to make it fit the space where we are. And there are a few elements about the church that I would say Americanized, like Americanizing elements. Yeah, yeah. And if you can tell the church slopes forward, that's not very traditional for Orthodox churches but I think it was to allow people to have a better view. The other thing is pretty, the, the pretty plush seating. So that's kind of another thing. Those, those I think are the more part and parcel, absolutely, <laughs> yes. for uh, an American context. Um, but other than that, it still maintains uh, a very ancient Byzantine style and design. Um, the inspiration, the architect tells us, his name is George Kondoyanis, and he's a parishioner here. Wow. He was very much inspired by his mother who lived for a time in Constantinople and who loved the Church of the Holy Wisdom, Hagia Sophia, mm. which was newly converted back into a mosque. Yeah. And so he wanted to have some connection to that in building this church. And so you can see elements of it, especially mm. maybe from the outside. And another component that comes to us from Constantinople, from Istanbul, is the actual dome is based on the church of Hora, which is a beautiful, beautiful church in Constantinople uh, that has one of the most well-known icons of the resurrection, uh, but also has a beautiful dome where Christ is surrounded by his forefathers. Here we have um, from Luke, 
chapter six, the description of who, who came before Christ and his genealogy, those individuals are depicted below him. Wow. So of course, as is common, you have Christ as the Pandokrata, the one who holds all things in his hand. Then you have his forefathers just below him. Then of course, in the pendentives, you have the gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And if you guys recall, or if you, Thomas, recall <laughs> the story of the four friends who bring a, a lame person on a pallet, yes. and they're trying to get to Christ in the house, and they can't, so they remove the roof and lower him down. Mm -hmm. In some way, this is what the four evangelists do for each and every one of us. They lower Christ down to us by giving us accounts of him, by giving us the four gospel wow. passages. So that's traditionally why the four evangelists are there to show that they somehow connect us and unite us to Christ who came down. Of course, we have the icon of the Virgin Mary, the Platitera or Panagia, the one who is broader or wider than the heavens. Um, the hymnography that we have that sings about her as being more wide than the heavens we can find in the feast day of the nativity of hers that we just celebrated on the 8th mm -hmm. and then also for the feast days of saint joachim and anna and the imagery is so beautiful as you know our churches face east yes the direction of the rising sun so she's like the new heaven mm -hmm. so just imagine the heaven spanning out and then christ is the sun that rises in the heavens so you have him depicted within her there. And you also ha have her as the bridge between heaven and earth. So she's the one that connects oh. us to heaven and heaven yeah, to yeah. us. So we have these, this beautiful axis that is kind of um, the earth to heaven and really heaven to earth. And then we have kind of the outside world, the outside realm, and we move in and we draw closer to Christ. So we have the outside, we have the area of preparation. We have the place where we, we worship. And then we have the holy altar, which is removed from us just a little bit by the icon screen, but it's not meant to obscure from us um, the reality of God. Mm -hmm. It's meant rather to provide us as a boundary that is in some ways, uh, what's the word? Fluid that has entrances and exits. Yes. And so it represents the heaven, again, just like I said, the, the up would represent that, but also in. And that's why you have the archangels on the doors, because the archangel Michael is the one who stands, he's depicted here. He's the one who stands with the fiery sword at the gate of paradise once Adam and Eve were expelled. So mm. archangel Michael is the guardian and kind of keeps us away from the things that we should not um, have contact with. And over on the other door, we have the Archangel Gabriel. And I don't know how familiar you would be with all of this, but in every Old Testamental appearance where an angel comes to someone and says, you will have a child, mm -hmm. and especially in the Annunciation, which is our church. But we have all these... Uh these physical this demonstration stuff of all this. <laughs> Absolutely, where you have the Archangel Gabriel come to the Virgin Mary and sh say that she will conceive. So you have Michael, who is the angel of justice, mm -hmm. and Gabriel, who's the angel of mercy. And you see that God uses both in his relationship to us. And now liturgically, when the priest or the deacon leaves the altar, they leave from this door, the one with mm. Michael. And when we re-enter, we enter through Gabriel. So why I said that this, this wall is permeable, the, the Aquanastasi is not meant to say that God is inaccessible. It's meant to say that we must prepare. It's meant to say that there are certain times when we can't access the divine, but God in his infinite mercy comes down to us, which is why we bring the gospel book from the altar, from the Holy of Holies out to be reverenced during, to be kissed during Orthros, during Mass. Oh yeah. Because that's like Christ coming into the world. We bring out the gifts for the great, for the great procession. We bring out Holy Communion. So again, it's not to say that no one gets access to that. It's to say that we have to be humble before the Lord and trust that he will come down to us 
So there's one psalm verse that's recited quite frequently uh, in Vespers. Surely your mercy and goodness, O Lord, shall follow me all the days of my life. That's the most common translation. Mm -hmm. Surely your goodness and mercy, O Lord, shall follow me all the days of my life. And it's interesting to consider, but the passage is actually, surely your goodness and mercy shall hunt me down or shall seek me out. So again, this is what we're saying, that there might be a place like heaven that we don't have access to, but because, because the word of God, Jesus Christ, became a human being, now we have access. Because he came down and received us, brought us back, and he ascended into heaven and brought our human nature. So sorry for the uh, extended, extended... Uh, Director's uh, cut. cut yes, out of the all church. But that is all being played out in what we do liturgically. So you have this movement inwards and up, and that's why you have the two axes of... Uh, or I mean, rather, that's two of the axes, kind of the mm -hmm. forward and the up. And the Virgin Mary is central to both, and the altar is central again. This is the place we orient ourselves in the Christian life. And this is, of course, also why the priests face this direction when worshiping as well, because we're also anticipating the rising of Christ, the rising of the Son, S-U-N, of righteousness. Another little kind of point, um, as we talked about, our, our churches are oriented towards the east, they're oriented towards Christ. We're told that he will, he will rise even as lightning from the east into the west. So again, that's why all of this about the east, the word orientation, orient means east. Mm -hmm. So what is orienting ourselves? It's finding the east. It's finding where we are relative to the east. And the Greek word is the same, pros anatolismos, meaning pros towards anatoli, the east. So t facing the east again. And so our churches are meant, as they're meant to remind us to constantly reorient ourselves towards Christ, mm -hmm. towards the light. And the last thing I'll say on this is that if we are all facing this way, including the priests, as you pointed yes. out, who's facing the darkness? The saints. The saints, Christ first and foremost, <laughs> our Lord and Savior, His Holy Mother, John the Baptist, the best man, who's right next to Christ, just like this were a wedding, <laughs> next, to, <laughs> next to the groom, the best man. Always. The angels, the apostles, I mean, these are the ones who face down the darkness on our behalf. Mm -hmm. So again, even the way our church is oriented is to remind us to orient our hearts on the light on Jesus Christ and not to focus on the darkness. And if we do that, we need not be concerned about the darkness because they will take care of it on our behalf. St. Isaac the Syrian says as much. He says, make allies of Christ and the saints while you're at peace, I meaning while things are going well. Mm -hmm. Because then when things mess up a little bit, they'll fight on your behalf. Because we don't have the strength to face the darkness, which I think we're all seeing more and more the power of darkness. Yeah. And so the more we can orient ourselves to Christ and the Theotokos and the saints, the better off we'll be, of mm -hmm. course. Thank you for watching part one of the Annunciation Columbus Cathedral Greek Orthodox Church church tour. Uh, part two is gonna be going up next week, so either check the description, wait till next week, might be on the screen. Who knows what we'll do, might go crazy. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell, send it to your mother, I don't know. But uh, yes, thank you all for watching. Have a great day.